Hello historians. Today we've traveled to Fairfield County, South Carolina, and behind me is the historic marker for the Battle of Mobley's Meeting House. But before we get started, we'd really like your help. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and like this video so you can see all of the adventures we're going to have for our series, The American Revolution in South Carolina. Now, let's see what happened here 241 years ago. So this marker is about a mile and a half west of the actual meeting house, um, and but there's no path to to, uh, to get there. There used to be, and it's inaccessible today. And since it's someone's private property, we're not gonna go creeping around and, and walk on their property without permission. So the battle at Mobley's meeting house really started because the Tories were all around this area and they were plundering the people's goods and homes and burning things and taking prisoners and just being really, really mean. So they had sort of uh, began to really irritate the patriots in the area. And so they had started to team up and gather up and want to join the resistance. So the Tories in the area, they had set up a, a sort of a camp at Mobley's meeting house. And they had, you know, accumulated a large amount of people's stuff or booty. And so they were waiting at the house uh, for more instructions from the British commander, Lord Cornwallis. So Robert Wynne, a, a prominent Whig leader in the area, began to rally support. And by the 7th of June, he had about 100 to 200 men. And he elected William Bratton as the field commander for the engagement. Colonel Bratton and his men rode hard that day. And they arrived at Mobley's meeting house. And when they got there early in the morning, uh, what they saw was a, a really well-structured home, well-built home, fortified, but the area of itself was not, and the security was very, very laxed. So after surveying the land, Bratton grabbed his men together and planned the surprise attack. We've driven up the road to Feasterville, where the historic marker for the Feasterville Male and Female Academy is at. We're now about five miles west of Mobley's Meeting House, and behind me is a restored historic setting where they will often do reenactments of the battle from 1780. The assault occurred at daybreak, with the Whig forces attacking from three sides. They left the north side uncovered because they thought the embankment was too steep for the enemy to, to flee. But that's precisely what the British did. As they fleed the blockhouse and the church, they escaped north to face the embankment. More casualties resulted from the embankment than from the battle itself. Few casualties were actually noted, aside from those who fell down the embankment. And the good news is that much of the plunder that had, the British had taken was returned to its owners. Although this battle was small in size, it was huge to the war effort for the Whigs and the Patriots. Following defeats at Charleston and Waxhaws, the momentum had begun to shift to the British until Mobley's meeting house. Colonel Turnbull, the British commander at Rocky Mount, he sent the Greencoat Tories under the command of Captain Huck out in reprisal. Huck's forces went on a minor rampage. In fact, they destroyed Richard Wynne's plantation. They also attacked a group of patriots who had been left to defend the ironworks of Colonel William Hill, one of the officers who was involved in the battle at Mobley's meeting house. As the war waged on, more and more patriots began to join the militia. This brought rise to Thomas Sumter as one of the Patriot commanders here in South Carolina. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can follow along all of our videos in our series, The American Revolution in South Carolina. Next, we'll be going to Huck's defeat at Williamson's Plantation. Bye.